Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up this 1940s seersucker house coat. So if you're interested in my process, stay tuned. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and supporting my channel. If you'd like to continue to support me, please subscribe and like this video and share it with someone who'd be interested. Bye. So for the materials, we have a yellow seer seersucker Hollywood pattern. It's a house coat and dress pattern. I'm gonna be doing the long version of this pattern. We have yellow buttons. I got these from Joann's for a dollar a piece and some white eyelet trim for the sleeves and the yoke. So now we are starting with tracing the pattern. There's a little bit of damage to the bodice pieces. Plus I wanted to do a small bust adjustment. So I went ahead and traced this onto craft paper and copied all of the markings through the preparations. This is my favorite part of vintage um, unprinted patterns because they have those preparations so it's really easy to to transfer the markings to your pattern or your fabric or whatever it is that you need to transfer them to so that's what i'm doing i'm just tracing these pieces out and then i do a small bust adjustment which is the first one that i've done in a really long time actually it's the first one i've done since um finding out i was pregnant last year so i was really nervous about this and now I am showing you my muslin. It fit pretty well. I used cotton for this muslin and I just draped on that eyelet trim to kind of get an eye for what it's going to look like. Now we are cutting on the fabric and I really, really like Seersucker. It's perfect for the summer. It's so lightweight and breathable and it's just good for the heat. So that's what I'm doing now. I've been looking for a a house coat pattern for a really long time and my friend actually convinced me to buy this I saw this when I was pregnant and she really convinced me to buy this pattern because it was like $20 and I usually don't spend that much money on fabric I mean on patterns but I'm so glad she talked me into it because I absolutely adore it so this pattern requires a lot of top stitching so I have to iron in the seam allowance first so that way I can top stitch everything on afterwards and you'll see that so the yoke is top stitch as long along with the bodice is top stitch to the skirt so that's what I'm doing here I'll also be making quite a few different house coats um, if you follow me at all on Instagram you know that I'm always home oh I'm showing you pattern matching I always like to match my pattern as much as possible it's just really easy on the eyes um, so yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I spend a lot of time at home. Most of my pictures are at home, not just because of COVID, just I'm a homebody and I prefer to be home. So I, even though I make a lot of going out outfits, I do spend a lot of time at home, but I don't make a lot of loungewear except for around Christmas time. So I wanted to change that and make a variety of house coats because I've been searching for so long and I found quite a few pat patterns that I like. So I think... I might end up with like three house coats all in yellow because yellow is the color of my house right now. It matches my couches if you've seen on Instagram. I have floral quilted couches and I painted my kitchen cabinets yellow and I just have a yellow house so I feel like yellow house coats is the way to go. So now I'm just stitching on the yoke to the bodice and I'm showing you my top stitching and I use French seams for all of this project if you haven't already you can check out my four favorite seam finishers video I'll put up a, a link in the cards and you'll see my the favorite ways to finish up my garments and usually I prefer French seams they're so durable and they look really nice on the inside but with this house coat I mixed it I mixed the different seam finishes I think I, I used two different ones. I surged and I did French seams for it. And so now I'm easing the sleeve and I'm kind of showing you how that goes. One of the difficulties that I had with like just mentally understanding was trying to get the yoke, the ruffled trim to go on with the sleeves. And uh, it, it took me some a while visualizing. I like to visualize before I put my pieces together. And I was kind of struggling with that visual for a while. So I did a lot of pinning and back and forth just to, to really understand how I was going to be able to get that on. 
properly, but I figured it out. <laughs> I did them two different ways. Uh, one way is the way the pattern suggested, and the other way is the way that I decided to do it my way. And I like my way better, but they worked equally and they look the same. But I feel like my way was a lot easier, and that was to not cut it in one continuous piece like the pattern wanted you to do. I cut it in two different pieces, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. It works anyway. So this pattern is from the 1940s and I really like it. I did run into some issues with my fabric choice, however. I definitely think that this pattern is better suited for a heavier material. Not a heavy material, but a heavier material. This is very, it's too loose and drapey. And the front of the pattern has this very detailed point on the button placket where it defines the waist. And that is missing from mine only because the seersucker would not hold that shape. And in the back of my mind, I said, Serena, you should definitely use a little bit of lightweight interfacing for this. But it was also, I, I wasn't sure if the interfacing would show through on the finished project. And I didn't know if I was going to have enough interfacing to use it on that. So I decided to go without it. And it kind of rounded out once I started sewing. So now let's talk about how the skirt goes on. Um, I flattened out my bodice so I could explain, but you have the two sleeves, one on the left and one on the right. And the skirt goes on in three pieces. Usually you would sew the bodice completely together and then attach it to the skirt when the skirt's completed. But in this case, you're going to add the back part of the skirt to the back of the bodice and then the, two, the left and the right side, and then you'll put it all together. And this works out for me because I like to do French seams. So I get to do two continuous French seams on both sides. So back to the fabric. So I think the sheer, the sheer, <laughs> sheer sucker fabric was a little bit too light because there's already some stress on the waist darts. And this is something that I find to be an issue in other sheer sucker garments that I've made that are fitted. The ones that I make that are loose don't have an issue and I'm using a, micro, a thin Microtex needle so I know it's not um, my needle being too big or too much tension. I always do test runs and it's only an issue in the darts. So I think in the future I will either stabilize the darts or actually um, before I wear this on a regular basis I'm going to put a waist tape on there to help ease some of the pressure off the darts. and. I think it's really important that I share some of these things so that way you can learn from what I struggled with or my mistakes. But then also when I do want to make changes and things that I've made before, I usually write notes in my pattern app. So when I go back, I know to make these changes. And um, so I want to share with you guys so that way if you decide to make something similar, or work with similar fabric that you can make those changes too without having to cause damage to your garment um, ahead of time. And um, ultimately, I love this piece. I really, really love it. And it made me think this would be a pretty like in the dress option in a white seersucker. Um, the only difference is, of course, I would either loosen it up at the waist or put the waist tape which I think the waist tape might actually help so I'm going to put that in eventually and I'm I'm so thrilled with this like I feel so pretty in it it's so girly and um I'm really excited to share this with you guys and I hope you enjoyed it and this isn't like my usual behind the scenes video where I, I talk a lot about the process so I hope you enjoyed this video so here is the final product. It's so cute. I actually think it would make, this fabric would make a beautiful bed jacket with the same eyelet trim. So I might do that in the future. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.